to help. So to call a person a friend, individuals individuals do not necessarily need to know each other for a long time. Many friendships start suddenly and gain importance for various, various reasons. Friend is that person who trusts himself above anything, who is always willing to help, whether in good or in bad situations. Okay? So people say, oh, uh, I met somebody, uh, I know a VA, I know him or her for a long, long time, he's my friend. Sometimes we start friend from scratch right away. A good friends. Right? Right away. We don't need time. Okay, we need some time, but we don't need a long time to get to know what a person is really like. Uh, the Bible itself decides friendship. Speaking about this, the Bible enumerates, the Bible shows several uh, times the importance of friendship. And one of them, the most say famous or most in the, that is clearly shown, is the friendship between Jonathan and David. Remember, do you remember this? Is in the first book of Samuel. We see the story of Jonathan and David. They were true friends. True, true, true friends. We're going to speak more about that later, about that later on, okay? And uh, several authors, the book authors, and even movie uh, directors, they have a show in movies and books the, how important and how, uh, how deep friendships can be. You see movies, friends die for, for friends, right? No, killing, no, getting killed because of the love they have for their friends. We see this in books like Don Quixote and Pan and Sancho Panza or Sherlock Holmes and the Three Bucks and Tears. Okay? Uh, also the, the, the Three Stooges. Remember the Three Stooges? <laughs> or the Fat and the Skinny, right? All, this, all those uh, wonderful comedies were really wonderful to see how they were fully integrated, no matter if they were wrong, if they were right, or the mess they were in, they were friends. Amen? And that's uh, something beautiful. Friendship, listen, friendship, a true friendship, true friendship is a gift from God to us. Amen? Amen? So value your friends. Value your friends. If we have a true friend, value them because God loves when we are true friends. Amen? The book of Ecclesiastes say, a faithful friend is a powerful protection. Whoever discovered him or her discovered a treasure. Amen? That is true. When you have two friends, it's like a, a piece of gold. <laughs> it's like a jewel. You should take care of it. Should, you know, you should keep it. So how many times people cross our path and we don't understand? How many times People show up and help us and be our friends and many times we take for granted. We don't even notice that they are there to bless you. And how many times you are in somebody's life because God wants you to help that person, to bless that person. How many times you are a blessing to that person or to that family or to whoever God puts you in. Amen? So let's start with the books of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27. Today we're going to read several verses, several passages. Okay, it's a topical sermon. The topic is what does the Bible say about friendship? So we're going to start with the book of Proverbs chapter 27. Page. Page four six eight four six eight. So chapter twenty seven of Proverbs verse seventeen. It says, 
is iron sharpens iron, so what man sharpens another. Amen. Is iron sharps iron, one man sharps another. So what does it mean? It means that a friend sometimes hurts somebody. And if it's vice versa. But that hurt is because of a criticism, because of something that happened. But they do this out of love. Amen? You, you, you shouldn't be able to receive criticism from people who love you. People who want you to get better. And me, Marie, and this is iron, sharp iron. Okay? However, the Bible stresses the importance of choosing one's friend carefully. Choose your friends carefully. It warns of the consequences of having the wrong kind of friends. Listen, we always have to watch out for the friends we have. Do you have friends? What are your friends like? Are they friends that help you move with God? Or are they friends that help you move away from God? We have to be careful. Remember, when you give a life to Christ, when you baptize, and you, you, you start a new life with Christ. You have to have friends that help you with God. When I became a Christian, I was 21 years old. I had many friends because I used to go to the disco bank, participate in dancing contests. Everybody knew me. I used to go out camping. I loved camping. I would keep it a lot. And I had many friends. Not Christian friends, of course. But when I became a Christian and I tried to move around with them, it was hard. Even back then, free sex went out, sex all over, booze, drinks. Even back then, okay, in Rio, in, in Brazil. And what happened? I couldn't do anymore. I couldn't. I had a girlfriend that I went to bed with and I broke up with her and she cried like a, she cried a lot, she wanted to go back and said, no, I can't. I'm a, a newborn, I, I, I give my life to Christ and I want to go for that. And she didn't want to move with me. I mean, to move with Christ. She didn't want, she believed in Christ, but she didn't want to follow Christ. I liked her, but I, did, I had to really give my life to Christ. I said, no, I cannot continue like this. I cannot continue having sex with someone I'm not married with. So I decided to quit that relationship with her. And it was hard because many of those friends of mine were nice people. Nice people. Nice people. College friends. Nice people. And then but their morals and ethics and their minds were totally different from my own mind. The new mind that Christ gave me. I, was a, I became a new man. Amen? Yeah. And when you are a new person, it is, it is impossible for you to mingle with the world and their morals and ethics if you are a true born Christian person. You know what I mean? I had to find new friends. <laughs> it was hard. In church. In, in other churches. I had to move forward because none of my friends followed me. Not even my best friend. Not even, I had a wonderful friend. Not even my best friend followed me with Christ. None. None. Zero. No one wanted anything with Jesus Christ. I share the gospel with them. I share. I went to disco that twice. Instead of dancing, I share the gospel. Yeah. And I went to disco deck and there was the out, out, outside, outdoor, indoor, outdoor, I mean, outdoor, the tables, people eating, and I, eat, I, ate, I ate, ate with them, and drank it with them, and share the gospel because I was, I had the fire of the Holy Spirit. I was really loving the Lord with all my heart. 
is I want to show them you have to give your life to Christ. Nobody accepted. Nobody wanted this thing. And for two, twice I went there. And I still have some of my friends. This, this. Some of my college friends are still with me on Facebook. And until today, they have to come to Christ. They're my friends on Facebook. I interact with them. Have, I say happy birthday to them. You know, sometimes they come to America and they, they pay me a visit. But some of these friends are still lost. You know, if this, they know that I'm a pastor, they know I'm a missionary, they know, I know I share the gospel on you know, Facebook always. But they, I mean, just one, I'm sorry, just one, a doctor, she became a Christian. Praise God, better is your name. Only one or two, my best friend. Out of that range of friends I had. So I say this because if you have friends, uh, relatives, that when you get together, you sin <laughs> on your talk, on what you do, you do better think twice before being around with them. Amen? This is God's word for you. We are separated. We are the salt of the earth. And if your friends don't mingle with you, you continue to be their friends, but not participating in the things they do that you know are contrary to the word of God. Amen? So the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians, let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 33, page 815, okay, page 815, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it goes like this, do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character. Amen? Okay? Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And this, this phrase, bad company corrupts good character, was uh, used by a Greek poet named Menander. But anyway, that is true, okay? Now, those friends, some of, those, of these friends, can cause a person to make foolish decisions on, or, in other ways, erode the good qualities. You may be a good person, you may be a Christian, but of being around those people, you lose your sense and your ethics and your morals, and you cannot continue being the person God wants you to be because of, of the, this bond you have with the, with the wrong people, with the bad friends, with bad friends. Proverbs 13, 20. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 13, 20. Proverbs has, have lots of verbs, of verses about friendship. So Proverbs 13, 20 is page page 458, page 458, 458, Proverbs 13, 20, it goes like this, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm, okay? He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a company of fools suffers harm. So, what does the Bible say here? Don't go with the fools. Amen? Amen. What is what is, what is fools? Fools for God is anyone who don't believe in the Bible, or who don't trust in God, or who don't follow the Bible. They're fool because they're going straight to hell. So can you be friends? Yeah, you can be friends, but not 
in everything they do. Yeah? Uh, the Bible teaches that good friendships should be based on something deeper than similar interests or hobbies. Many of our friends are work friends or hobby friends or interest friends, but what makes a good friend? Well, this is Psalms 119, Psalms 119, verse 63. Okay, let's see this verse. Page 438, page 438, Psalms 119, verse 63. Huh? 438. Okay. It's, it's Psalms. Psalm 119, verse 63. It goes like this. I'm a friend to all who free you, who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. In this is what does the verse say here? This is a very important verse. Take note. 119 verse 63. What does this, this what, what does that verse teach? It teaches the friends you should have. What kind of friends should you have? You have to have friends who fear God. Friends who follow his precepts. Amen. That's the friends we should have. Note that the Bible writer states that he chose friends who have a healthy fear of displeasing God in the desire to live by God's standards. The Bible also highlights the qualities a good friend should have. Example, Proverbs, back to Proverbs 17, 17. I said Proverbs have wonderful verses. 1717, page 461. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Okay? 1717. A friend loves at all times. A friend is a friend, no matter what. Amen? At all times. Proverbs 18, 24. Next page, page 462, Proverbs 18, 24, it says, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen? I had those friends. And I still have friends like that. I have friends closer than my brothers. I have friends who I am able to say what I what I'm you know, what I what I what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, because I know they love me, I know they care for me, and I I open myself more to them than to my own brothers. And this is life. I mean, sometimes you will get closer to your friends than to your own family, okay? Uh, so these verses that we just read in, in, in Proverbs teach that a good friend is loyal. A good friend is loving, kind, and generous. A true friend can be counted on to provide support during life's ups and downs. They're there for you. A real friend will also be courageous enough to speak up if you are going down a bad path or about to make a poor decision. Right? They will turn friends to four. Proverbs 27. Let's go to now Proverbs, Proverbs 27. Page 468. Verse 6. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Okay? Sometimes you have friends who are your enemy, who envy you, who gossip about you, 
who took no back, and they kiss you up front. That's what the Bible says. Be careful. True friends, they speak some type of harsh words to you, but they love you. Amen? And that's what it was about. We love no matter what. And verse 27, Proverbs 27, verse 6, and also verse 9. Perfume and the sense bring joy to the heart. And the pleasantness of one's friend brings, springs from his earnest counsel. Okay, again, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart. And the pleasantness of one's friend springs from his earnest counsel. Okay? It's, it's wonderful when you are down at the bottom and you have a friend who comes to you, hug you, and give you love, and give you care, and say, Count on me. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Right? Friends are very important, folks. Very, very important. Extremely important to have friends around you. And so be do your best to be a good friend. Everybody here, okay? Finally, what were the fiction of humans, okay? What are some examples of good friendship in the Bible? Well, we have several. The first one I told you, Jonathan and David, okay? David and Jonathan, okay? Although Jonathan was, Jonathan was about 30 years older than David. 30 years Jonathan was older than David. David was much younger, but they became true friends. And in 1 Samuel, 18 verse 1. I'm not going to open it. It says, After David had been talked to with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David. Okay? Jonathan became one in spirit with David. With David. They loved each other so much. And Jonathan helped David a lot because he saw David a good man, a man of God. And Jonathan was also a of God. So the, the bond of God's love got them together. Amen? Someone else. Ruth and Naomi. You know this story? Ruth and Naomi? In the book of Ruth? Ruth is a book in the Bible, by the way. Okay? Right after Judges. Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. And Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law. Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law. And there may have been a difference in age between them. Furthermore, Ruth's cultural background, Ruth was different from Naomi's. Okay? Despite this difference, they were from different countries, but they got together. Because, as I said, Ruth was Naomi's daughter in law. Despite these, dif di these differences, they formed a very close, loving relationship. Take a look later on, you read Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. It says, But Ruth replied, Ruth no, told Naomi, Don't urge me to leave you, because Naomi wants to go back to Israel. And she said, I'm going back home, you stay here, I'm leaving for my country, I'm going back to my country, you stay, because her son died. And, and, and Ruth was her daughter-in-law. So say, you stay here in the country, I'm going back to my country. And then Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Okay? And God blessed Ruth so much because she went to another country with her mother-in-law and there she met another man, Boaz, that married her. And Mary and Boaz loved her so much. And God gave her another beautiful, wonderful husband. How about Jesus and the apostles? Right? Jesus, Jesus had a position of authority over the apostles. 
be the teacher and master. John 13, 13. The Lord, the Lord. John 13, 13. Jesus says, you call me a teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. He was a teacher and a master, but he was a friend. Okay? Jesus did not view them as unworthy of his friendship. Rather, Jesus had a close bond with those who followed him. He said, this is what Jesus said, I have called you friends because I have made known to you all the things I have heard from my Father. In John 15, John 15, they don't only read this, John 15, 13 to 15, okay? It says, greater love has no one in this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father has been known to you. So, can we be God's friend? Of course we can. Okay? But remember this. Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command. Amen? Okay? Conclusion. It is possible for us to be God's friends. The Bible says in Proverbs 3.32 The Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his countenance. Takes the righteous into his countenance. In other words, God befriends those who try to be decent, honest, and respectful, and who endeavor to live up to his standards of right and wrong. No one becomes friends with another just because they sit together during a service, in a movie theater, or restaurant. A friend is someone with whom you spend time, with whom you are intimate, right? So we have to be intimate with the Lord by spending time with Him, amen? Uh, which man in the Bible was most intimate with God? A question. Which man in the Bible was most intimate with God? You know? Which man? David? Samuel? Elijah? Adam? No. It was Abraham. In James, James 2-3, it says, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. Abraham was a true friend of God. Amen. And we can be God's friend. Which disciple accompanied Jesus until his crucifixion? Which disciple was Jesus' true friend until the end, you know? Which disciple did not leave Christ for any reason, but accompanied Jesus. He didn't run away. The only one, only one disciple. Do you know which one? Okay. It is known that John, John, courageously accompanied the Messiah to the cross. And it was handed over by him to Mary's care with the mission of protecting her and being supported by her as if he were really her son. <coughs> Amen? <coughs> Only John. Peter ran away. Everybody ran away. But John was there on the cross. And because of that, John was the apostle, the only apostle that was killed. He died naturally. Know that? All the others were killed. Killed by swords, by the sword, killed on the cross, was killed, murdered. But John was preserved. And he was the only one as well that had the revelation of the end of times. The book of Revelation was written by John. He died in the old age. The Bible says that Jesus is our great friend. He is such a good friend that he even gave his life for us.
friendship with God. This is this, very important to, to finalize. Friendship with God is the best friendship there is. Amen? So, that is the word for today. May God bless you. I hope that you all take this home, think about it, pray about it, and let's continue. Be the friends we are here in the church. Amen? Amen. God bless you.